Hi, my name's Bob Cuneo. I'm 71 years old and I had robotic assisted partial knee replacement surgery 19 days ago. I had a rapid recovery because I experimented and developed a few common sense techniques that allowed me to actually walk without an assistive device in four days, go upstairs in five days, take a bicycle, an eight mile bicycle ride on my sixth day, and I actually went back to work part time on my seventh day. But before going into these common sense methods that I use, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. I'm a researcher and published author uh, in the healthcare industry. Um, I've had six articles published, one of which was published by the American Physical Therapy Association. Over the years, I have managed as many as 200 therapists, and I also have an aerospace engineering degree. When I say it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand this, I know what I'm talking about. The other thing that I want to mention is that I got myself well prepared for surgery. A week before uh, the, the surgery, I did a 12 mile bike ride, averaging five minute miles. And then three days before the surgery, I made sure that I could do 300 repetitions on a stepper I had in the house. Needless to say, my legs were very strong uh, when I went into the surgery. Now let's talk a little bit about um, joint replacements. Everybody who uh, has had a joint replacement surgery has been told to keep your leg elevated, take your meds, stay hydrated, and listen to what your physical therapist tells you. I did the first three, but because I've managed so many physical therapists over the years, I decided to apply some common sense to what he told me. Oh, by the way, as you can see, I still have the surgical dressing on. I don't get my stitches out uh, for uh, another two days. Um, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to a, a good progress report with my, with my doctor. Um, but uh, back, to, back to the methods. The, what I didn't like about the instructions I was given by the physical therapist is that he told me to do the routines while sitting. He, the routines made sense. He was just asking me to flex the muscles that uh, were retaining all the lymphatic fluid in the blood, which made perfect sense. By exercising them, you're pushing the fluids out of them. But what did make sense to me is he said to do it while sitting. If you're pushing fluid out of damaged tissues while you're sitting, gravity is gonna take those fluids downhill. And because you have smaller blood vessels in the calf, the ankle, and the foot, if you're gonna get a blood clot, this is where it's gonna happen. In fact, in the written instructions I was given when discharged from the hospital, that's exactly what they said. If you're gonna get a blood clot, it's gonna be here, here, or here. The other reason why I didn't follow his instructions is that the day after surgery, this was extremely painful. It was excruciating pain. This group of muscles here, of course, had been moved tremendously to allow you know, the, the, the equipment to get in there and grind, and grind away my tibia and my fibia. So I had damaged, pulled muscles. As soon as he left, I immediately got in a prone position here in my bed. And because I couldn't lift this without secure pain, I lifted it up myself and placed it on the toes of my other foot to begin the stretching. I, I also had a, uh, a, a big pillow here uh, that I used. So without taking any steps and allowing fluid to flow in the wrong direction, I did my stretching here. I then used my hands to assist my damaged muscles to get this up and I exercise my quads, I exercise my calf muscle, I exercise my front ankle flexors. This, these movements, of course, were releasing fluid and blood from the damaged tissues, but because the knee is higher than my heart, the fluids are going in the right direction. The fluids, thanks to gravity, 
are flowing in this direction, moving toward larger body parts where there are much larger blood vessels. And of course, this reduces the, uh, the, the, the risk of blood clots. I would do this every half hour, every hour um, for, for a few minutes. Uh, and then I would put my, uh, my foot up on a pillow, put a laptop on my lap, you know, do work on the computer, talk to people on the phone, uh, and, and then go back and, and do it again. Um, on the third day after surgery, uh, while, while coming back from the bathroom, and I used, I used a, uh, a walker my, uh, my first two days after surgery, because I didn't exercise these muscles extensively, magically, I can now do this without pain. It was amazing how just giving these muscles rest and not listening to the therapist really paid off for me. So that now in my third day, I could actually lift this leg up by, you know, it could do it by itself. I could swing it over, I could stretch it, and I could elevate it without having to hold it up and do the exercises that he recommended. These are the same routines he recommended. These are the same routines that all physical therapists should be recommending. And again, I'm exercising my calves, my front ankle flexors, all the little muscles in my feet, and more importantly, my quads and my hamstrings. But here's what's different about now that I, my hands are free, here's what I started doing to assist gravity. While the leg was up in the air, I used my fingertips and I applied pressure as I moved my fingertips down. I did it consistently around all my lower leg. I went around the surgical wound. I, I put pressure behind my knee. There was a lot of fluid uh, in here. And I just kept working the fluid down to where where I wanted it to go. Obviously, I wanted it to go down here where there's a lot of blood vessels and it's close to my heart. If the fluid is down in your foot, your circulatory system has to work much harder to get it out. If you've moved the fluid down here, your circulatory system is much more efficient and it's going to get rid of the swelling a lot faster. The first time I did this, I could actually feel the fluid flowing past my knee down my thighs into into my larger body parts. It was it was it was kind of a weird feeling. But if I if I left my leg elevated and just waited within 10 minutes, and sometimes maybe 12 or 15 minutes, depending on what day it was, my bladder would fill up. And I would get up out of this bed, go to the bathroom, urinate, hydrate. If it was time to take my meds, take my meds, come back here, do it, do it all over again. Uh, and again, I would sit back, raise, raise my foot, exercise, do this, and wait for my, for my bladder to fill up. The, uh, on the third day after surgery, I was actually able to drain so much of the fluid out of my legs that I urinated eight times in a two hour period. Every 15 minutes for two hours, by doing this, I was able to push all this fluid down here. And because it was close to my heart, it quickly got, got into my bladder. I even noticed that as this fluid built up down here, my heartbeat would go up about five or six beats per minute while it was pumping all this out. And then it would settle back down and I could feel my bladder just filling up. So again, every 15 minutes or so, I'm urinating, hydrating, coming back here and doing it again. Um, but a, a word of caution, uh, when you are pushing this fluid down, you're creating negative pressure under your skin. There used to be fluid there and you quickly pushed it away. And for me, it created an irritating sensation on my skin. I experimented with a couple of different ways of dealing with this irritation. And the one that worked best was a heating pad. 
as soon as I would push all this fluid down and I'm waiting for it, uh, I'm waiting for the, the heart to fill up my bladder, I would take a heating pad just for 10 or 15 seconds, hold it on the, the skin, and as I warmed up the skin, this irritating feeling uh, uh, went away. And it was very effective. But you don't want to leave this on too long. You don't, want to, you don't want to warm up the underlying muscles. You just want to warm up the skin and the lymph nodes under the skin and make this little irritating feeling uh, go away. Uh, the other thing I want to mention about this technique is once you've pushed this fluid down and it has settled down on this part of your body, don't get up. In my first day when I was experimenting with this, I got up after doing this and I could feel the fluid actually going back down my leg and it was painful. As it passed through the knee, uh, it really, really hurt. So I immediately, I, I immediately went back, put my leg up, worked the fluid back down, and I kept this leg elevated until, again, I had to go urinate. Okay, so two different cautions about this accelerated draining process I'm telling you. Number one, don't stand up after you've done it. And number two, you're gonna feel a little bit of irritating. Um, I found a heating pad for 10 or 15 seconds work fine. It might, it, might, it might be for you. And of course, if you're a physical therapist, watching this, or you, or a patient and a physical therapist are watching this, the physical therapist should be holding the person's leg up while they massage and move, and move those fluids down. Uh, and again, on the sixth day, uh, when my wife looked at the, uh, my two legs, she said, my God, your thighs and your calves, well, both legs are the same. All I can see is your knee is a little bit swollen. And of course, that's the day I went and, and did the, um, uh, the, the uh, eight mile bike ride. I hope these tips help. Uh, and I hope that your recovery um, is, is speeded up and, and, um, and uh, good luck with your, your knee surgery and your recovery from it. Uh, again, my name is Bob Cuneo. Uh, I'm, I'm a scientist. And oh, by the way, uh, my goal uh, in doing this is to go back to running 5K races within 90 days of my surgery. Stay tuned, I'll let you know if I achieve my goal. Bye bye.